All right, so I'm going to show you how to make a super simple heat map instead of the more complex version I've shown in a previous video. These are the packages I have currently loaded. I'm just starting off where we left off at the end of the DSeq tutorial with this table of differentially expressed genes. We have 1,300. So the first thing I want to do is just convert SIGs a table of differential expression data to a data frame that we'll call 6DF. And if you look at 6DF, it's now just that table in data frame format. Now let's just map these ensemble IDs to gene symbols because I don't want to look at a heat map with these on them because I don't know what genes these IDs refer to. So we're just going to use this database to map a new column of symbols. So 6df symbol map IDs this database using the row names of sigdf as the keys. And the key type is in symbol and the column is symbol. This is the lookup column in the database. So now if we look at it, we have new column symbol with these IDs. Next, let's get some normalized counts from the DDS object. We're gonna call counts and then we have the DDS object from our DC analysis, and we want normalized equals to true. So now we have this matrix of all the genes in the DDS object, so all 30,000 or so entries, but we only want the counts with matching and symbol IDs to our significant data frame. So we'll just say here, row names, 6DF. And now we have a matrix of only the 1300 genes. And let's just call this map for short. And next we want to get the Z score for each row. This is going to be a transpose apply to the mat object we just made one. And then we're applying scale, which will return the Z value. And then we had to transpose it because this would apply to the columns and return a funny shape. So now we have the same exact shape matrix as mat, but we have Z score values. So we'll just call this mat.z. And then we just want to rename these. And they're going to be in the same order as your counts table. So we can do a call names mat.z. And then we can set it to a vector of our column names, or in this case, we can just use our call data from earlier, which was just a table with the sample names. So we can just use the row names of call data. Now, if we look at mat z, we now have the columns named correctly. Now we can actually make the heat map. So we're going to use the heat map function from complex heat map. And we're going to pass the mat.z object. And then let's just for now cluster both the rows and the columns. So we're going to cluster the genes and the samples. You usually always want to cluster the samples. You don't always need to cluster the genes, but Sometimes it makes it look a little nicer because it groups similar patterns together. And then column labels is going to equal the call names of our mat.z. And then our name, so our values, we're going to call them C score. And then that's it. Actually, one thing, I didn't use the symbols that we mapped to. So row 
labels is going to equal the symbol column of SIGs df, but only where SIGs df equals the row names of net.z, so only where the ensemble IDs overlap. Okay, so now we have the symbols, but of course we can't actually read anything because we have 1300 rows. So let's just combine this. And then we're going to add a filtering step here. So if you remember what 6df looks like, let's just do 6df equals 6df. I'm going to set a couple different filters. Let's try 6df. And then we want to filter on the base mean. We'll say greater than 100. And then we can filter on the log fold 2 change. Do we really care about a 0.5 log fold 2 change? Maybe if you didn't have 1300 genes. But since we have so many, we're going to filter on that. So the absolute value, because we want negative and positive, is 6df.log full change greater than 1. Let's just see what happens. Or let's set it to 1.5 and see what happens. Oops, forgot a comma. Okay, so we have fewer, but we still have a lot. Let's see how many we actually have. So we still have 200 rows. We can filter on multiple different criteria, depending on your project, depending on how many genes you have, and depending on how many genes you want to see in the heat map. So let's just try slightly higher thresholds. We still have 123 genes. But you can see, interestingly, in this data set, we have a lot more down-regulated genes than up-regulated genes versus the... You can kind of see that this data set was a little noisy, like Ed mentioned when we actually did the DC analysis. And your figure is never going to look as good in our studio, so let's just try saving it. So we're going to set this as H. And then use the PNG function to save it. the resolution, and then the width, just set it at a thousand, and then the height, just set it at two thousand and see how that looks. And then we have to say print h, and then dev off. Okay, so it looks like this. There's still a lot of collision, so we can make it a little smaller. You can just keep on changing the thresholds until you have something you like. I'll just do it one last time. I'm just going to set this to 2.5. There we go. A nice little heat map. We can easily read the genes. We could play around with the height a little bit too to make it a little nicer. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. The data not so much, but the heat map itself.